In his memoir, Ride of a Lifetime, Bob Iger weaves an encompassing tale forming today's mega conglomerate of Disney, Lucas, and Marvel content. Global audiences are voting for the new Disney with their wallets, and it's a veritable throwdown between Comcast, NBC, and HBO Warner. Who will come up on top? We'll answer these questions and more with AI and tech-powered data. Netflix has been in the financial news. It's been a tribulation for them lately. The industry direction. It started with Netflix. It started earlier than streaming. Remember when Netflix? It used to come in the mail. Many were big fans of the DVDs delivered by the postal service. In retrospect, they had to do that because movies were too large to stream over dial-up. We could imagine that their original vision was in their name. In classic fashion, they established a product beachhead. Netflix during those days was already revolutionary because you could choose your movies over the internet. That was a level of confidence that people hadn't experienced. Reed Hastings, the CEO of Netflix, had the vision to extrapolate technological trends. It's probably the cornerstone of a high growth business. The best way to predict the future is to create it. The streaming model hadn't been proven out yet. Netflix predates iTunes even. It was only a matter of time. In a way, they planned the obsolescence of their own first product. Their first product bootstrapped a recommendation engine. It seems just yesterday they pioneered the Netflix prize for machine learning, which was to develop a recommendation engine. With user data, they could solve the indecision problem for both bits and atoms. Further, Netflix isn't just recommendation systems anymore. They use GANs, general generative adversarial networks to generate banners for their shows and then run A-B testing in a supervised reinforcement loop. So Netflix is still bleeding edge on the technology side. But is that enough to keep them ahead of the titans? The $1 million prize now 15 years ago. They could have never predicted where their AI journey would take them. Is it concerning though in light of their recent stock performance? If it's a pure technology play, then it shouldn't be so simple for competitors to catch up. It's definitely a business area where content can rule the day. The tech stack is more commoditized than it was seven years ago. Players such as Disney bought the necessary pieces for streaming platforms. In addition to content, the recommender system has shifted from just content to churn prediction. AI has applied to the core business problem. AI has never been a magic cure-all, it's a next generation tool. Next generation tools such as latent diffusion method for text to image generation have been encroaching on the historical problem of content. There's just a tremendous history with media companies. Like most things in capitalism, we can glean lessons from Buffett. Warren Buffett essentially bankrolled the original Capital Cities and Time Warner merger. There's a detailed discussion in the Buffett biography by Roger Lowenstein, which we link in the description box below. Buffett made his first investment in Capital Cities in 1977, praising the manager there, Tom Murphy. Tom Murphy was Bob Iger's boss and trained him up for the big role of CEO, which Iger covers in his journey to CEO with all the trials and tribulation in his book. Media companies in the US is a grand poker game writ large with content and properties traded like the biggest chips in the markets. Further, we really get the scale of Buffett's operations when the managers that he praises are themselves grandfathers to the current generation's corporate leaders. We start to piece together our approach by reading multiple discourses. We get a 360 degree view of the landscape which we can supplement with amicus technology. With Amicus technology, we can deep dive into fundamental valuations. We'll showcase three different companies, Disney with Marvel content, Warner Brothers Discovery, which owns HBO, and Comcast NBC with the new Peacock streaming service. We'll delve into the recent price history, as well as fundamental valuation metrics, such as Ford EPS, price to earnings growth ratio, also known as the PEG ratio, enterprise value to EBITDA, and more. Analyst X is an AI advisor. The ratings are generated through a machine learning train validation and test setup. The factors are the model explainability weights from the fundamental metrics. 
we actually train a separate model for each fundamental metric. Then we aggregate the metrics through a method called mixture of experts. Mixture of experts is yet another neural network layer that adaptively selects among the fundamental factors to learn the best combination for price prediction. We report the amicus edge, which is the accuracy of the model above random chance. This is just like the edge you would get selecting your favorite sports team. It tells you your advantage. First, the basics. Among the three companies, Comcast NBC has the highest dividend yield at 2.88% and the lowest Ford PE of 9.29. These two numbers imply a somewhat conservative company with low growth expectations. On the other hand, Warner Brothers Discovery and Disney have no dividend yield. Now, you can see from the AI reports, it actually doesn't rank any of these three companies very highly in terms of the Ford price. One corollary we can draw is actually from a Wall Street Journal video linked below, which describes how capitalism and markets function. In the video, they mention that sometimes companies compete against each other very vigorously and they provide better services at a lower cost, which they must do in order to garner more market share. The real benefit in the end is not the of the companies themselves but rather the consumer and this is also a phenomenon that the renowned uh, conservative economist milton friedman like to point to now capitalism doesn't always work this way but sometimes it works this way and it becomes very effective in improving the services that are provided to consumers so we learn two things from this is that this is a very dynamic market area and that because of the intense competition among media companies, it's unlikely that any single media company will collect outsized gains, which will accrue to the investors, people who would purchase their securities. We can see through a machine learning process that this is backed up by the Amicus AI rankings and analysis. So that covers our quick overview of the current day media companies. You can find more information by subscribing to our AI generated reports, which cover over 5,000 securities. And now to end on a slightly lighter note, we go on to our Silicon Valley clip. And I, th I think what I learned is actually Burning Man has had internet for a while. The people at Center Camp, there's some billionaire that like donates satellite connectivity every year and you just, if you want your camp to have internet, you have to buy a special receiver like Radio Dish to point at Center Camp, which very few people do. I felt mixed about exposing Starlink to my camp because there are a couple of people who are like, I don't want to know what's going on at work right now. I'm sure it's a shit show. I'm sure the markets are a mess. Like, don't tell me. But then there are also parents who had their kids at home with babysitters and like wanted to check in on their kids. And yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's, you know, it's a, a fascinating, it's very ephemeral, right? Like this whole city is built in a matter of weeks and is torn down again in a matter of weeks. Yeah, everybody, you know, in theory contributes something. I guess Galactic Jungle contributed uh, Carl Cox as one of the DJs. And, you know, Galactic Jungle, the Uber one was funny because it was the only camp where you didn't see coolers. You saw um, glass front refrigerators, which, you know, commercial grade stuff, like clearly they came in on a a truck bed but everyone else is like you know using an ice chest or like a, something a little bit more uh, rudimentary self-sustaining and there are the uber guys where everything it's like you know it's like staging a five-star hotel in a war zone <laughs> yeah i mean we went to one of the uber founders camps called uh, galactic jungle and uh hilly and i walked in after our friend david because he was meeting up with one of his company's investors in the sort of back area and as i'm walking through there are all these like beautiful women from all around the world and i'm like and i know that none of them did any work to contribute to the camp right like they didn't clean up their own garbage they didn't set up their tent they didn't do anything right it's supposed to be a communal event so i, I said you know Haley, they should call this camp try too hard and uh one of the camp members heard me and was like i don't think you belong here i had a t-shirt that said my own camp's name and, you know She's trying to kick me out and I said, oh no, we're just going to the back here with our friend David, like, you know, we are invited. Um, the airport was really cool too. Um, we met some of the ground control people and, you know, uh, they told us stories of people flying in for $30,000 from New York and 
for getting their ticket, having to fly back and get their ticket and come back again for 30k a pop. Of course, if you fly in, you can't bring in all your water in your tent. I mean, you can, but it's you can't you can't land a C130 on the on the dry lake bed. You have to land a, a small prop plane.